Hi everybody. I've got <laughs> Donna's here watching. She's always watching because I'm always so That's nervous okay. about this. John Williams is coming on today. Now I'm not only nervous about myself, I'm nervous about John Williams coming on because we're both so blooming terrible at all this stuff. But anyway, welcome everybody and welcome to my restaurant life. I'm really excited. Uh, once I get John on, I'll be even more excited. Um, and uh, John Williams is executive head chef of the Ritz Hotel in London and a, a great friend, uh, but a real sort of icon of our hospitality sector. And there's some really interesting stuff to talk about today. Um, when I've just seen that the two meter rule is likely to be reduced and also there he is, John Williams is there. Now darling, quickly come in, he's joined. How do I get him on? Do I press that? That's right, yeah, see he's gonna... He's, he's gonna, joined. Well you can ask him then, hold on, let's just go here. Let me just let's go, go on here, yep, let's, we'll request him. Okay. Yeah. So John, if you're watching, you just have to press like... So now he just has to say yes. yes. Like all that waving. I'm waving at you now. You've just got to come back and wave at me. We're waiting for him still. He hasn't. <laughs> oh gosh, it's like two dinosaurs here dealing with this stuff. We're still waiting for him. So John, you are oh, connecting. Here, here, he is. Yay. here he is. Hello, Bobby Dazzler. <laughs> Hello, John. How lovely to Hi, see John. you. Hi, John. How are you? You okay? Oh, it's so nice to see your face. How are you, mate? I'm good. I'm very good indeed. Good, good, good. Well, it's great to have you on and great to speak to you. You and I with, with uh, Insta Live are not two of the most sort of, you know, this is, it was never going to be a technical easy route. But um, <laughs> great to see you and, um, and uh, just really nice to sort of, it's lovely to, for me, it's great time to sort of catch up. Did you get any champagne? Has anyone delivered you anything? Look at that. What have we got? Can you see that? I can. I've got one here. Well done. Well, cheers. You've got a big glass. Very well done, Frère Jean Frère. Frère Jean Frère. Well done. Cheers, John. Cheers. Hmm. Oh. I'm just... Right, we've got to start talking about some things. I could chat for just about nothing for a whole hour. But first of all... John, um, we're going to talk about some serious things. Nothing really crazy serious. We're going to have a bit of fun. But uh, first of all, um, we, uh, one of the reasons that I wanted you on uh, was to talk about my Young Chef, Young Waiter competition, which we launched, obviously. We launched it just over two weeks ago. All the application forms have come out. And, you know, what the main reason, uh, we, we redesigned it, as you know, last year. But one of the... Uh, the perfect sort of timing for this right now is that by redesigning the competition last year, we put it all online, both from the application process and the first round of judging process. And the only bit we do live is at the very, very end. Now, you are like, you know, one of the icons of, of competition work out there, running all the different competitions you have. But, you know, for me, this was about... We redesigned it last year and it's become the perfect competition at the perfect time to engage with our young staff, our young chefs, our young waiters that are sitting furloughed, you know, maybe concerned about whether they're coming back. And my, my role and my job and my passion was to, to uh, connect with them, um, motivate them, re-energize them and to make sure that they're they're, they're, they're engaged going forward. 100%. And, I think... and I was just thinking on that note, um, you will have a lot, I mean, your team at the, the Ritz. So by the way, everyone, John Williams is the executive head chef, master, Michelin star chef at the Ritz. And, um, and you have a big team in the yep. Ritz. We'll talk about that in a minute. But within the young, within the 26 and under, how many would, would be 26 and under, and you think in, in that level with uh, the Ritz alone? I would say probably 65, 70%. Wow. Wow. That's a lot. You know, I think our industry is a young team, you know. What's very, very important in every sense of the word is that people put themselves 
out there get involved in competitions. I encourage all of my staff to compete. Basically, it helps me see where we are as a, a team in the Ritz. And, you know, it gives people so much more confidence with building their careers. So it's a very, very important factor. Yeah. I look at it, you know, I'm chairman of the, the Royal Academy. And we have this thing where we've got the apprenticeship. We then move on to the annual awards and competitions exactly like yours, the young chef, young waiter, is the perfect thing for people to develop themselves and really show off what they can do. And it inspires people. It inspires the next year's crop of stuff that you have to get involved and to really put themselves to the test. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's nothing better. Well, we've done, we had two amazing winners last year and, um, and we've invited them on as ambassadors this year to be, and it's basically, John, it's my new family. It, the, the, the Young Chef, Young Waiter, as you know, has been going 41 years this year. Yeah. Um, and, and, and the winners of the past, Simon Gerling, your, your, yeah. whatever his title is anymore, I never quite know his title, <laughs> but he's, he is, you know. He's director of food and beverage now. There you are, at the Ritz. And, um, and he was on the same competition as Simon King. He was yeah. at the same year. Uh, and Simon King is my head judge for my waiters. Um, and off to, went with Gordon Ramsay and everything else. And obviously Simon Gerling runs all the food and beverage at the, at the Ritz. Um, and, and, you know, it was just so important for me to, to, re, to re-engage, as I say with this, but also to bring on like the new family. The old family were the Simon Gerlings and Marcus Waring's and Mark Sargent's and Nathan Allen's. I mean, these are all winners. Amazing. And in fact, I had Adam Handling on the other day, who was actually in the competition in 2011. I had no idea. I mean, it's amazing. And so the competition has got great credibility, great history. And so now what we're going to do, we, as I said, redesigned it, brought it up today, restyled it. And this year it's going off at, a, at, a, at an alarming rate because everyone can, can apply because they're at home right now and they're not sure. you know, really just what they need. But we're going to really engage with also the, the youth and the, and the youngsters, if you like, or the new, the, the future of hospitality. We're going to engage with them. So Rich did really well last year. He's now joined Tom Aikins. Um, and he's doing something for me on Friday uh, for the British and Irish Trading Alliance. He's going to do a, a cooking event for them. Um, now it's, it's all for charity and everything else. And he's going to... Uh, but it's great for him. You know, there's, I think there's going to be a Zoom call at 120 people or something crazy going on. I don't know how it's all going to work. But anyway, I've connected him. But of course, one of, the, one of my judges is, is Ruth Hansen. Uh, yeah. Who was with you. For, yeah, for... Ruth did an apprenticeship with me. She did. And, a... you know, there's a perfect example. You've just mentioned some names of past winners and where they are today. And Ruth is a great example of a person that loves a competition and it, it just gets her out there. It allows people to see the capabilities of these people that enter the competition. That's why they're so good. Yeah, 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 yeah. And she's only, I think she's 24 or five now or something. 24. So she's 24, she could actually re-enter, but she's a judge. I keep her as a judge. But I, we, uh, one, she was one of my first Insta Live. We call this whole section here Restaurant Live. Uh, and and I'm, I've had some great uh, uh, chefs come on, you know, in this section. Uh, I should have some more waiters, by the way. I better get Simon Gerling on, otherwise he'll be really upset. But I'll make sure he gets involved. You make sure he gets involved. <laughs> but um, I was going to ask you, so yeah, Ruth is, Ruth is one of those people that obviously... Um, has done really well in competitions. I mean, she's just finished Great British Menu that she was in. Yeah. The mm-hmm. Amazing, um, amazing uh, uh, awards that she's had. And she's obviously won uh, other things as well. So, um, and now sort of going forward, what are the questions I was going to ask you? Because you have your own competitions. I want to obviously, on this particular 
piece promote you know the young chef young waiter competition because it's out there it's active it's like and how are you dealing with the awards of excellence and the other things and craft go to chefs i mean what are they what are they doing at the moment are they on hold or are they trying to do things online well interestingly um i had a conversation just last week and whilst we've delayed we were halfway through the annual awards and what we're going to do is actually finalize everything in january Good. so we are carrying on with the competition we have kept in touch with everyone and they will actually come forward and finish off with the finals so everyone can achieve their awards but it will be a bit delayed and it will be in january and i think that's going to be the way it's going to go now um sure everything uh we we're, we're involved in i mean this one is its own competition it we can do everything online until the final which is now still at november the 17th hour one and i think by then we we i think we're going to be okay but even if we're not we have a plan b of a, a almost a covid plan where we could all be online if we wanted to so we're yeah. right up together with that but you know the other events i'm running is basically a delay process which is really fine nobody's gone oh well, we can't do that anymore it's just well let's just push it back a bit let's just push it back a bit so everyone gets their awards certainly yeah. the ones you run um and so really that brings me on to well actually obviously news today you probably saw that 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 the it's now the reopening it's now how are the hi Sean or oh, Sean's just joined how are we going <laughs> to reopen these venues now i speak to i've had Claude Bosey Tom Aitkins Jason Atherton you know and it really is interesting to hear their views what i am getting though pretty positive from all everybody i do a big zoom call tomorrow with with David Lowy and and uh, uh, and about representative 2 to 300 restaurants um and they're getting you know there's a there is a sense of but well, i think we're going to we're going to give this a, we're going to give us a real go now obviously that was july the 4th i just heard this morning you know you've probably heard that they're thinking of trying to bring it forward to june the 22nd um uh, so and they're also the big 2 meter rule so how are you so i'm going to come to about how you <clears throat> but right now you know the ritz restaurant the michelin star restaurant not only do you have that of course you've got the palm court where you do the teas you've got i mean how are you what is the plans going forward for there well basically you know a place like an institution like the ritz will only actually work with what the government actually gives out um so we will just work within the guidelines with whatever the government actually says and we have a lot of various but you see these messages on north is a you're a northeast legend by the way it says it after <laughs> i knew i needed to make a change world class wisdom whoever um k greenwood i don't know who that is but anyway somebody is very kind somebody is always here to chat you i love all these messages that come up sorry john <laughs> <laughs> but we, you know in all essence we are just waiting for the government to press the button so that we can actually open up in the way that the government would want us to do so yeah and that will happen whenever the government says so and we will work accordance with that to actually make it happen we we are very fortunate however where we have two fantastic spaces last year we opened the secret garden and we've also got the italian garden which used to have a cigar bar there and what we're going to do is hopefully open that come july or august whenever we can so we'll have these two great spaces where we'll probably be able to do up to 70 covers wow wow yeah you know with the two spaces it'll be 40 in one and 30 in the other um you know but once again until we've actually got all of those guidelines in place you know you're just waiting to make sure that you're working within the guidelines and doing the right thing yeah 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 well we should have those you you know we should have those uh within the next week we should have these guidelines um somebody a legend mr john oh i can't I've just gone actually well you'll see this um we should have these guidelines pretty soon as i say this morning i mean these things are changing day by day sure 
the big one is going to be it's a two meter rule two meters one and a half meters one meter where is that going to go um and uh and you know you've got some big spaces you've got a beautiful big dining room you've got palm court you've got the outsides uh, and then, of course, you've got all the rooms. And so that's another, another factor that, you're, that will be coming into all this and how that's going to work. Um, one of my dogs. Oh, oh hang on. That's one of, if you ever watch any of my cooking things, John, you'll know that you might hear the dog. <laughs> um, and so, and so um, on that basis, was July the 4th, I mean, it may be brought forward, but was July the 4th the date that you were going to be sort of going back to to opening up? Yeah, depending, as I say, once we get the date and the quicker we get the date, we can then make a proper plan. But I think the best thing really is to wait for the government to press the button and say, there's the date and we will work as closely to that as possible. Um, but obviously taking that into consideration. Mm. Uh, it, I think it's important that we actually just understand what those rules and regulations are. We are working with the two meter um, guideline at the moment. And of course, it changes the way that you can operate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If, you know, if we can work with masks and things, we can change all kinds of different things. So everything is literally waiting for a little bit more concrete guideline before we make any decisions whatsoever. Right. Right, yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And for those people that, um, that um, don't know you, which, and I've just seen some, a legend in the UK, proud to have worked under him. I can't see who that was, but somebody's obviously worked with you. Um, what you where did you, you know, you came to the, you've been at the Ritz now 20, 20 years? 15, 16, 16. 16 years. And, um, and you've taken the Ritz to get it, well, I'm going to say it's first mission itself, but when, it I is. mean, yeah. The first mission star ever. Yeah, it's amazing. And look, uh, the food I've eaten with you many times, it, uh, not that I can influence anybody, but it's worth, it's worthy of more than one mission star, uh, Mr. Williams, I can tell Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, and, and knowing that the venue as well as I do, um, <laughs> it's an absolute, it's, it's a dream and a pleasure to always come there. By the way, I just have to pick this little guy up. He's just decided to come and say hello. Uh, <laughs> If I don't pick them up, they'll be barking everywhere. So, um, but tell us a little bit about you. I mean, there's lots of people out there. This is a new audience for us. Uh, yeah. wh where were you before the Ritz? Where did you come from? I know where you come from, but how did you get to be where you are now? Well, I, I've never been the person that's moved around every year or this, that and the other. I've had a, a very specific focus all my life of wanting to cook what I call hot cuisine. That is the, the, the be all and end all of what I wanted to do when I was a young lad and coming into this industry. And I came to London, I wasn't quite 17. It was my second job. And I stayed in the Royal Garden for seven years where I did restaurant work, hotel work. And I also went to work with the master Guy Mouiron um, I used to work with him as a as stagiaire three days a week. And I did that for over, I think it was about 18 months. And I used to do lunches with him just to learn what he was doing. Guy Mouiron had ma cuisine. And it was the first two-star restaurant along with the Gavroche at the same time. Wow. And it was a great little restaurant. And it was something that I was very proud to do. I then moved on to open a restaurant um, with my ex-executive chef, who was Remy Fougere, in a restaurant called Le Crocodile in Kensington Church Street. And it was the, I worked harder there than probably anywhere in my life. I used to go to the market. I worked six days a week. I was there from morning till night. And I decided, when I was 20, I was 26, I think, that hotels were going to be where I wanted to be. And I was fortunate enough to be offered a job in Claridge's as their premier sous chef. And that was, I think it was 1983. And- um, Messages, that's a great, love that you've kept your accent. I don't know <laughs> you, but... Let me tell everyone, 
This is an accent that costs a fortune to get rid of, and you cannot get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> But, I, okay. And by the way, know, Phil Frey, by the way, said, said thanks. So they were there. So no, tell, you know, thank you very much. So then you went, so then you went to Claridge's. I went to Claridge's as the premier suit. Oh, Ruth Hansen has said hello as well. Hi, Ruthie. <laughs> and lo and behold, when I arrived in Claridge's, I said, this is what I want to do. It was serving, yeah, very, very particular people. It was, you know, the rulers of the world and MPs, you know, prime ministers, heads of state, all of that kind of thing, which Claridge's was. But I loved it. I absolutely adored it. And I stayed there for nine years. And there was a freedom to cook with product that I really adored. It was the expensive product, yeah, but... Yeah, yeah. You know, it's all about being able to get the, the revenue back to make it work for a business. And I stayed there as number two for nine years. Wow. And I had got married. I, I, you know, I had two kids and I wanted to move on. Unfortunately, Mr. Giles Shepherd, who was the MD of the Savoy Group at the time, said, don't you worry, young man. I'm going to let you be head chef in the Barclay. And after nine years, I eventually went across to the Barclay and I immediately started working very, very hard on their restaurant and their private dining. And it was really bearing some great fruits. And um, basically what happened, there was a change in the Savoy group. Mr. Raman Paharas came on board. I know him well, yeah. And By the way, did you have So working for you, Adam Smith. Does Adam Smith work with you? Adam Smith worked for me for nine years in the Ritz. Okay, He so started some, the same day as me. I can say now, so learning from Chef Adam Smith, I can say now, Chef, you, you are a legend, Mr. John. That's a lovely message. <laughs> I didn't realize you were so popular. <laughs> well, Adam, Adam is a good lad. He's a great cook. And he's a young man that is going to be one of the kings of London as far as, uh, you know, cooking and being a chef. He's a great young man and I'm very, very proud of him. As I am with all of my young, young guys. Yeah, which I will is. talk, I really do want to talk about the, the young guys that are really working within my kitchen later on because they're special and they are the future going out of this and what they can really become. But yeah. jumping back. Yeah, come back to the bar. Raman Paharas came on board. And I remember taking him around and I was, he was such an inspirational man. He said, John, he said, you're the young man in the, in the, the Barclay and in the Savoy group. He says, I'm going to put a stamp on you. And he worked very closely with me for a good nine months. And everything was coming so good. But suddenly I got a telephone call from him. And his exact words were, John, you're going back home. I was crying on the phone. And he says, you're going back to Claridge's, the job's there. I don't want to ask anybody else to any kind of interviews. You're, you are the man that will go back to Claridge's. And off I went. And it was the proudest moment of my life at that point. Wow. And that to be head chef at, the, at Claridge's? Yeah. Amazing. And I stayed there for Who's Debbie? Years. Yeah. Who's Debbie Julian's? You are our King John. Just love, love it. Do you know who that is? Do you know who this is? No? Yeah, Debbie's a great girl. Oh, Debbie, okay. <laughs> I don't know where they're all coming from, but they're all coming. coming. <laughs> they're all coming out of the woodwork. This is why we've got to get Turner on here. You can see people. He's would... got to. He's got to. Yeah, we get Turner. What? Get yourself on here. I know you would enjoy it, Turner, and actually see people saying nice things about you, which is quite unusual. <laughs> Brian, I'm sure, will come on one day. He will come. We've just got to get him, we've got to get him teched up a bit. Well, anyway, he beat me at golf yesterday. Yeah, he, you played? Yeah. Oh, good. Did it you win? hit and miss, and Brian beat me. Oh, well. Yeah, yeah but well, that was a good what? handicap. <laughs> but there's another story there with golf. We'll wait for that. So anyway, Finico goes, he went to Claridge's. And so so well, I went back to Claridge's. And really, 
we went through a real rebuilding process. Um, we had beautiful kitchens there. Uh, you know, there was lots of great banqueting. The restaurant was a great restaurant. But we then had the Americans come on board and they were driving it with a, a very, very different point of view. Not that it was bad or anything like that. They, they had great intention. However, um, when Gordon Ramsay came in, I then decided that I wanted to also run a restaurant. And um, what actually happened was I had been offered several times to go back to the Ritz. And one particular time I was actually going to open up a restaurant. And I got a telephone call from the then GM of uh, the Ritz. And I had worked with him before as a restaurant manager, and that was Stephen Boxall. And right. he said to me, look, I know you came last year and it didn't work out. What will it take for you to come to the Ritz? Well, the timing was perfect. And I said to him, nothing. Just all I want to do is to be able to operate and to really, for me, to make the Ritz special. And um, the Ritz has always been a special place. The, the room in itself, the restaurant, is the kingpin. Yeah. And the chef must understand that you follow the restaurant. You build everything around that restaurant. You know you've been in the, all of the rooms in, in the Ritz, but the restaurant is very, very particular. And the style of food must follow the restaurant. The style of service must really follow the restaurant. And it took a, a, a little while for people to see what we were trying to achieve. And my, my thoughts were, you know, grand hotels weren't going through the greatest time as far as gastronomy was concerned. And my job was to actually make sure people understood that we were cooking at a very high level. But we also had to modernize what we were about. I've got the greatest respect for Cesar Ritz and Escoffier and the style that they set. My job was to modernize that into the style that would be very much acceptable and relevant for the modern day diner. Mm -hmm. So they're small tweaks, but they're also very important ones in the, the cooking aspect to make sure that it was light enough, fresh enough, and precise enough to really achieve what we actually want to achieve. And we haven't finished yet. No, the I mean, reality of it is I want more and more, um, only because I, I, I still really enjoy it, Bob. Well, I know, look, I, uh, for me, as, an, as a hotel, it's an, ab <laughs> as a hotel, it's an absolute, you know, it, it, it is one, of my favorite, if not my favorite hotels in the world. And the most, the most sort of bizarre thing about it, about the venue, about the location, is it's, it's almost frightening to go in first time because, oh, I'm going into the Ritz, I'm going to the Ritz. And when you go into the Ritz and you get to know a little bit about it, it's one of the friendliest, warmest, homeliest places you'll ever go in. And honestly, I, I'm saying this, I get goosebumps when I think about it, you know, I come and sit in there and, and it's just, it is like going home. Now, I know that's, here we are, why, why are John's thoughts on market? Oh, hang on, this is something, yeah, we'll go. <laughs> there's another question I'll come back. But, um, and it is very homely and you know when, when you walk in the wrist, people say, welcome home. Yeah, and do you know, the style, every bit of style that we have can be quite conservative. So it's more important than ever that there is a warm feeling and a really good welcome in every sense uh, from the service guys to give you that homeliness and to actually give, give you a real good welcome. Yeah. And that's where Simon is very, very good. He's not um, too starched. Yeah. And if that's the right word. And when you think about the people that come to the Ritz, um, we've got two chihuahuas on my lap now, by the way. When you think about <laughs> people that come to the Ritz, and you think of the Palm Court and Tea at the Ritz, which is 
I mean, I think there's something like, or it was, but it will be bad. There's something like 400 teas a day or something on four or five different services. Um, you know, the, the people that come for the tea are people from all over the world, from every part of life, because it could be the biggest occasion you saved up for. But, you know, everybody is looked after like they're the only person as they walk in there. They you know, one of the things that you have to remember as a, as a member of staff is that every person that is coming to the Ritz is coming for their own special occasion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In every sense, whether it's business or for a, a, a real special occasion, it is for something very special. And I, that's what we've got to make sure that when they walk out of there, they say, the Ritz is special. Well, and, and, we can, and I can see, and I've spoken to you a lot, but everyone else can see how, just how proud you are. Also ah, it's, it's one of the proudest things in my life. Well, um, and, and, and if you think about, um, you think about, here we are, uh, this is Rich Henderson, who won my Young Chef, Young Waiter. Uh, John's such a good, uh, John got such good respect for service. It's, it's such a symphony at the Ritz. Well, that's a night. Well done, bro. Well, like that. That's another very important. Rich was also in your cooking. Cabin. Yeah, Rich was also part of the Awards of Excellence, I believe. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, and and you know, it, it, it is a symphony. It is. It works like it is beautifully organised. But it is also, you know, one of the most iconic hotels in the world. You know, so yeah. when you are proud as you are to be there, you're 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 you are at the top of the tree, really in that in that environment aren't you you know well i've done about that but it I, all i can tell you is it's such a special place and what you said what the chap said there about the, the service it is so important in our style of cuisine also what we had to do was modernize the, the style of service so that when we were doing some ad la table it wasn't too intrusive and to make it swift and elegant mm. in every sense of the word. Because when you have waiters that are dressed up in tails, etc., you can't have them as plate carriers. But then, no. but then when you think of the, you, you mentioned this Goffier and Caesar Ritz, when you think of the, the, the footsteps you walk in now, I mean, these are pretty <laughs> footsteps. Somebody's got here. Mr. Bagoose is gone, but we're happy to have John with us. Oh, <laughs> that's <you> very kind. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. I'm very happy to be speaking to the new Bagoose, of course. <laughs> so, John, we were talking about, um, the, you know, your team, your young team right now and the future, which is where we started this conversation. Um, and I think that's going to be a great way to sort of finish it off. And I think what we'll do, we'll sort of come to that. Um, I've got, we call this section Restaurant Live. Uh, I, I am thoroughly enjoying um, speaking to, I get some time. Now, I've had time with you, John, delightfully, but some of the other guys, you know, I'm getting a good, you know, 35, 40 minutes just chatting, which normally you go to a restaurant, the chef comes out, says, hi, Bob, or hi, this, or hi, and, and it's all lovely because you're really busy. And all of a sudden, yeah. <laughs> all of a sudden, it is that, you know, we're all in the same boat right now, you know. So I've got some amazing, I've got Sophie Michelle coming on tomorrow. Um, Wonderful. I've got uh, Francesco Mazzi on Friday. And I've got um, my, you know, one of my, my heroes and friends and legends. I've got Thomas Keller on Monday. Lovely. Um, so it'd be brilliant to, to get his, uh, his, his thoughts on where we are as we go forward. Um, in, from the US point of view. Um, and you know, Tom, I mean, we, we, we all respect him uh, as a chef uh, and his whole attitude towards this, this our, our industry, our sector, you know. Um, and I've been doing some cooking online as, as well, which I've... Yeah, uh, we've been watching. Thoroughly <laughs> enjoyed. And we've got a little surprise coming up this week. I won't say anything about it. We've got a little surprise. Um, and... And, and I loved, I did a lobster thermidor the other day, which would have been perfectly done in, in the old days at the Ritz. And my, and one of my, you know, for me, look, this is, I, I'm a chef, but 
I, 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 I left it a long time ago. But I started thinking about cooking a lot since I've been in lockdown. Uh, and I've started really thinking like I used to think. It took me a little while. And I started, oh, I'll do something, oh, I'll do something. And now everything I do, I start to think about it. Am I gonna, I've got some broad beans out there, which I've got to think about. What am I gonna do? Fred Foster, you know Fred? So, so. Yeah, Freddie worked for me. Freddie worked. So, <laughs> turn it. So I've got this box of beautiful vegetables from Fred. And, um, and I've got some peas and I've got some broad beans and I've got, and I'm thinking, okay, I'll do, I do something, I, uh, something. I'm just thinking about what I'm going to do, but simple things or some things can be more complicated. And Claude Bose, text, you know, um, on my Instagram said, you must invite me for your lobster thermidor. And I thought, wow, he wants to, <laughs> I that. too much inside And so I'm getting fun from this, you know, I'm, I'm enjoying obviously this with you and I'm also enjoying doing a bit of cooking, you know, but, but coming back to what you just said, it's so important that for me, yes, I can have, I can have a bit of fun with it, albeit now I'm starting to think about it a bit more seriously. But cooking should be like that. Well, the only time I'm quiet and I'm thinking is when I'm cooking. Yeah. I'm quite a boisterous person, but come the time when you're actually cooking and getting in the pan and yeah. just looking at that shallot and how yeah. far you brown that shallot or not will yeah. change the flavour. Well, so thinking is very important. It's so funny you say it because I... One of the things Donna keeps asking, she said, I said, well, no, I don't want to brown it, but I might want to brown it just a little bit. <laughs> and, well, how long will that take? Well, I said, oh, well, it will take until it's the time I want it, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, oh, somebody said, love cooking with Dazza. Now, that's my bit, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, so now it's the future. So you were talking about how it's really important to look after the, 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 the future, the tomorrow, the, to, the oh. future, you know, the, the young chefs and waiters and the whole, and so important that we're talking to chefs here because the chefs have become like the brands, if you like, but without that service, without Simon and his team and without the amazing, um, I'm going to call it front of house, but the team in front, um, we you know, Bob, what you're doing, your so job. important the, the team front of house, we never give enough credit for. The, the reality of it is, if they don't do a good job, the food will not be as good. Yeah. And of course, they are the difference of an excellent, great meal to a very good meal. Very They good. can make that difference where a chef is cooking to the point where he is. So good, bad, or indifferent, they will only enhance and make your experience the one that you'll remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the service, I mean, you, you run the Awards of Excellence or you're uh, chairman of the Awards of Excellence and you have seen over the years the incredible increase in the attention to deal, like, detail on service now. And our service, you know, we, 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 we recognise, uh, I'm Michelin recognised, it's Michelin watching, watching. Um, we recognise... Um, that London is a, the food hospitality capital of the world. You know, it delivers a, a multicultural experience at super, super high level. And, but it's, it, it, it is, if you, if you take the last X amount of years, whatever that is, whether it's 20, whether it's 10, or different thing, but we have got off the charts with our service and the attention to detail now in London and the UK uh, is so good that really we never expect getting to ever get a bad meal, really. I don't think we ever think about now, wherever you yeah. go, go to the golf yeah. club, go to the pub, or you can go to wherever it is. But service, you know, it, it is the key. If you 100%. Go, you're ruining all that poor old chef's time. He, he's taken so long to cook. And if you get great service, well, you think, but, you know, you, that is your guarantee for those people coming back. Yeah, 100%. That's, mm -hmm. the, that's what they remember. You know, they'll always remember a great dish, but the, the experience comes from the service guys. And I think the other thing as well, again, which, which people don't really yet understand, but they're getting there, is that these young chefs, 
service staff, housekeepers, whatever they are within the organization at the Ritz or whether you're, they are young professionals. You know, you 100%. can't wander into the Ritz and suddenly pick up a plate and start serving. You know, you need training. Yeah. And the train, these are young, super professionals in a brilliant career. That's without doubt. It, what's interesting, you know, a lot of the best guys that I see are the people that have stayed with me. I'm just, top, I'm just topping up. I'm going Forget to my... in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Always put the hand. There was a lovely. I just missed a lovely message there, didn't I? But the guys, the guys that have stayed. I've got two guys at the moment. Um, Spencer Metzger, um, who's worked for me uh, for just over nine years. He started when he was at school. He's done an apprenticeship like nothing else. He's just come back from France and spending three months there after winning the, um, the Rue scholarship. And let me tell you, he's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. He's driven. He's a great cook. He's a motivator. He's hardworking. I've got a, the, the next guy. I mean, if, if I look at Ian, who's representing the Bakus door uh, and he's still hanging on waiting to see what's happening with the Bakus door. I've got another one in Deepak Malia who's a great sorcerer. He loves making great stocks the way that you should and we're, we're very very particular about how we make stocks and sources. Yeah. And the reality of it is they're getting real solid training but they've developed themselves within, within the Ritz and they're capable of going anywhere. Yeah, and, you know, yeah. They're all coming through all the time. You yeah. mentioned Adam Smith earlier on, who's in Coweth Park. Adam was another one who went right around my kitchen. And these people, when I tell you they're special, they're so special. I know that they're going to be kingpins in yeah. their industry. And it's so important. And if people just have a little bit more patience to really learn and understand their kitchen instead of learning a, one quick recipe without understanding what it's all about. Because not all the same recipes will fit into another restaurant and you have to have that flexibility and understanding. And it's only when you get that that you're able to move on and to really have lifted your standard of where you really want to be. I'm just fortunate that I've got people that are very, very dedicated and I know that they're in the right place to give them the launch pad of being a great chef in every way. My yeah. pastry chef, he's been with me 13 years. And you know what? He came as a chef to party and there's no better. I've, I'm well, very, very lucky. Worked up through. And yeah. I mean, I suppose there's the, 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 the good and, and there's, a, there's, there's a sort of positive and negative side of this is that you, the, I know, I know lots of chefs and, and waiters that have left the Ritz and gone off into different directions. But there's not, there, you, you have to, <laughs> you have to, you've got to let them go. I mean, you can't log yeah. in. Um, Diane Kelly, by the way, uh, thank you, by the way, there's loads of questions from Diane. Diane, thank you for finding my love of food. And where is John from? He is the executive. Stout Shields. So, yeah, <laughs> quite, quite, quite a serious chat we're talking to, Diane. So when <laughs> you say you love my cooking, we want to go to this guy. He has a fabulous. Maybe one, one day, somehow, John is going to come and I'm going to cook with John somehow. I don't know how it's going to work, but somehow we'll do it. You're going to have to okay. come and we're going to cook together somehow. And You've got that, a deal. Well, that, we did cook together, remember, in the Ritz. We did. We did. We did. We did. And it was uh, an amazing occasion. Well, I watched. We didn't cook too much, but we did cook. Yeah, I watched a lot. On that, on our, we did a little, um, a wonderful taste video when I was rediscovering taste. Uh, and there's another story there. I won't go into all that right now. <laughs> but... Um, it's fantastic, John, to see you. Um, we'll uh, hopefully uh, be together pretty soon. Uh, yeah. 
some, we've got some, we've got Claire coming on, Claire Smith coming on as well. And I was just saying that one of the things that is, it's sort of sad that you, you train these people in such a brilliant way. And ideally, you'd love to keep them all. But of course, they, oh, have, yeah, yeah. they have to go. Because yeah, of course. But you, you're, you're like that. It's a bit like Raymond Blanc, you know, you, 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 you create, and, and Gordon Ramsay and all of these people, you know, they've developed, and Pierre Kaufman, you know, developed these incredible chefs. And it's like, people say, well, how did London become this, this, inc this incredible place? It's the food capital of the world. Well, people like you and, and the other, you know, great chefs have developed these new superstar chefs. And we have so many going forward that hopefully we'll keep and keep and keep, you know, to be the, 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 the top, the number one capital for, for food and creativity, but this sort of multicultural dynamics that we have as well. No, without doubt. You know, you're spot on. Um, as much as I don't want them to go, I understand they have to go. It's they have to go. Yeah, yeah, they have to go. <laughs> well, look, we have to go. Well, oh. <laughs> I should do this for a living, actually. We, I think you should. <laughs> um, John, it is... We're gonna next time I see you, we're gonna be on a golf course. Yeah, I'll wait for that. I finally got the email from Turner, so I got that, so that's good. Um, <laughs> uh, um, I, and there was a competition, funnily enough, from the course. It's on Sky Web, Piers Morgan. Everyone went to Centurion. I saw it this morning. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that was fine. So um, it's it's a joy speaking to you. I've absolutely enjoyed it. I'm glad you got your champagne. Um, I'll see you. Hopefully, we'll try and meet up next week or within the next couple of weeks, depending on when you're opening, of course, because they bring that forward. You might be, you might be going to work sooner than you think. Well, you never know, yeah. Never know. <laughs> well, John, Paul, all I can say is it's been a real blast, and I really appreciate you inviting me on there. Oh, all the very best, and all sweet. the very best to Frère Jean Frère. Oh, you're very sweet, John. It's a, it's always a delight. Lots of love. Bye bye now. All the best. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh.